So, I mean, Club, do you think you earned a stripe after this last month, June, in the ranks of Noblesville veterans? If not, we're getting close. You're getting damn close, but enough to dive on in to our first Noblesville concert review on the next episode of Vinyl Stadium! <laughs> and our main man, Club did a scouting report for me way back at the beginning of June. It was the first w- weekend of June, and you saw fish. And I say scouting report because we went to Dave a couple weekends afterwards. So I was like, Club, yeah, uh, just go to a scouting report. Um, you know, you don't have to like go see a concert or anything. You don't have to like pay attention <laughs> to any of the music. Just like get a lay of the land, see what's happening there. And that's exactly what you did, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. No music. Just looked around. I actually put in earphones so I couldn't hear any of the music, just purely looking around. (laughs) (laughs) Instead, you went deep down, deep, deep, deep down into the ocean and swam with the fish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this was just a crazy weekend. So this was June 3rd, 4th, and 5th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Noblesville, Indiana, Ruoff Music Center, also known as the Deer Creek. Um, but yeah, yeah. So this is my second time at the Deer Creek. I went to Dave Matthews Band. Uh, I don't remember the exact date, but August of 2021, and that was a two-day show. So this was different for a couple of reasons. Obviously it was a different band, still a jam band. I mean, right now I would say fish and Dave Matthews band are the two most popular jam bands out there. I don't know. I'd, I'd put, I mean, grateful dead in their heyday was, but now it's dead and company. I think fish and Dave probably get a bit bigger of a draw than dead and co at this point. Um, yeah so yeah fish crazy (laughs) um i don't know should should i start diving into the set for friday or should i give a little more like background context well i mean like for context at least for myself so club has been just trying to get me to listen to fish for the last year and inadvertently from putting in like club just said fish is one of their top his top favorite bands so they're on that stampede shuffle constantly and uh, at first i was like you know i don't know like i got some really weird songs with like uh, the lead singer's voice um they're super fucking weird and it was really weird (laughs) and i was like i don't know but then i would like just shuffle it and i'll be jamming i'll be like three minutes into a song be like who is this oh my god it's fish um so I have to thank Klepp for introducing me to fish. I still haven't like dove that deep in, but more recently than so I have. But Klepp, you've listened to their whole discography and everything, correct? Yeah, yeah. There's not a single studio album of theirs that I haven't listened from track one to the end. Like, it's just like Dave, like same thing. There's not a studio album, track one to the end that I haven't listened to. If you held a gun to my head and said you have to pick one band that you like more, I'd say fucking blow my brains out because I can't pick. <laughs> <laughs> and then also maybe explain to the people before even stepping foot inside of Deer Creek, what was that parking lot experience like? So the parking lot is unlike anything I've ever seen at any concert. And we'll we'll touch on it more. Um when we do our Dave Matthews band Noblesville concert review, because they had a a smaller version of it there. Um, But if you've ever dove into grateful dead concerts and like what the culture was like, you know, back in the eighties, the nineties, it is sort of similar to that. They have what's called shakedown street. And essentially what it is, it's, it's all third party 
vendors that are not, you know, officially affiliated with the band. Some of these people drive from like states away. Um, and there's just tents everywhere of people selling food, uh, merchandise, like jewelry. There's this guy that makes like, cause you have the official like fish event poster, but then you have like the shakedown street vendor that has like his own like version. And he has one for every year. And he would even have like the previous years with him. So that like, you know, like if maybe you missed him last time, but you still went to that show, like you could get that one. Um, and it, the other thing too, that was mind blowing is the merchandise was not just fish. Like they had any jam band you could think of merchandise there really. So like, yeah, I saw Dave merch. I saw Grateful Dead merch, uh, like Billy Strings, Widespread Panic, Mo just like any government mule, just like any mid-sized jam band. Um, yeah. Um, the other thing too is there were, uh, I guess, vendors there that didn't have a tent. <laughs> There'd be people that would just have like a cooler full of like beer, water bottles, and they'd just be walking around selling that. But then you would also have somebody with like a basket of marijuana nuggets, just like selling weed right out in the open, nobody stopping them. There were people with gases of nitrous, I think, was it nitrous oxide or nitrogen oxide? Whip it. Whippets. Yeah. Um, selling whippets and i had never seen it on that scale before i remember we mentioned it on our goose concert review remember there were two guys selling them outside after the show there but fish they were like beer vendors at a baseball game like anywhere you looked there's like whippets whippets <laughs> four for 20 four for 15 like <laughs> four for 20. i i had never seen anything like that there were people that were just like selling lsd and mushrooms just wide out in the open like openly advertising it so ruoff music center didn't really give a fuck it was uh anything goes out there and honestly it would have been kind of hard to control it it was so many people like they they're there had to be easily over a thousand people just out there on the shakedown street including like vendors, people that were there for the actual show. Um, just unreal. Like I, I don't even know the way I'm describing it, like gives you somewhat of an idea, but you really just don't know until you're like there and actually see what it's like. And I'm yeah. proud to say they really didn't shake me down. I didn't buy any of the merch. The only thing I got, so there's this, place called cosmic charlie's named after grateful dead song cosmic charlie um and they sell these burritos the cosmic chicken and the mac and cheese brisket burrito they're pretty good so i got one of those after each show that's about it <laughs> well hell yeah no i've uh i've heard their crazy times i've my only kind of experience was Last year, seeing Dead and Company and walking down, but uh, from what you so, told me, it looked even crazier. The Shakedown Street from Dead and Company is a lot more similar to like Fish's Shakedown Street than like the Shakedown Street we saw at Dave. But if you remember when we were walking down the Dave Shakedown Street, I was like Cosmic Charlie's. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I made it a point to, to point that that out. Um, no, that was awesome. Yeah. So that, that gives you a little bit of an idea. And um, another thing too is, so that's bumping not only before the show, but after the show and the cops usually give it about an hour before they came and shut it down. So yeah, there's just like a party out in the Ruoff music center parking lot directly after the concert. That's awesome. No, I've heard it's just wild. Um, but yeah, man, so 
night one, where were you sitting for night one? So night one, very first fish show ever. Your boy had to get in the pit. <laughs> Naturally. Absolutely. So yeah, so on this trip, I came with my buddy Bryant and his roommate, Scott, who I was meeting for the first time. Um, and the way everything worked out was interesting. So I originally, when I planned on going, I planned on going alone. So I booked a one bedroom apartment um, in Northern Indianapolis, right where Indianapolis borders Fishers, Indiana. So it was in a pretty decent area. Fishers is like a pretty nice suburb of Indiana. Um, but anyways, the three of us were in this one bedroom apartment because Bryant, like, you know, like I've, I've met him sort of recently. He's a, you know, somewhat recent friend. Um, we were just talking about it. I, I knew he like sort of wanted to go to this cause he loves fish too. Um, and last year he camped and you know, like he's got a camper. So I just sort of assumed that that's what he was going to do again this year. Um, and I don't know, camping's okay, but for like a three-day concert, I wanted to be able to have access to air conditioning and a shower. So I was like, yeah, you know, like I'll meet up with them there, but I'm just going to do my own thing with this Airbnb. Um, but then I remember like talking with him about it and he's like, yeah, um, the campsite's full and uh, the hotels are stupid expensive so I, I don't think I'm going to go. And I was like, well, dude, that's crazy. Like you already bought the tickets, just stay at the Airbnb with me. Um, and so he got added on. And then a, a little bit later, his roommate wanted to come too. So the three of us squeezed into this one bedroom apartment, but honestly it was fine. Like it accommodated the three of us, no problem. Um, so yeah, we uh, all congregated there Friday night, headed off to Ruoff. Bryant and I were in the pit, and Scott had a pavilion seat. Um, but so we get there, we go to the pit, and it was way different than anything that I've seen. And these people are lucky that fish fans are so laid back and not aggressive because at a different concert, these people would have gotten kicked. <laughs> so Spruce, let me just, let just ponder this scenario for a minute. Could you imagine at King Gizzard and the wizard lizard, if somebody were to be sitting down in the pit on a blanket what might happen to them <laughs> wait a minute was this during the show dirt so most of these people stood up during the show but there were some that were still sitting down but what i'm getting at it was so hard to get into the pit because there were people that had like these blankets laid out and were just sitting on them taking up all the space I'm like, this is a security issue because so Brian and I were like two of the last people that could actually fit into the pit area. There were people with pit tickets that were in the aisle in the lower pavilion because they couldn't get into the pit because these people were so entitled that they felt like they had a right to just sit down on this blanket and take up all this space to the point where people that have pit tickets are outside of the pit because they can't get in. Now that's never that's, seen. That's, that's crazy. A display of selfishness quite like that at a <laughs> concert before. It's crazy. Like it just unlike anything I've ever seen. And like, you know, like, like nobody's happy about it. Like people are like pointing at him and just like assholes, like whatever. And like, there are people just like stand up. And so like, you know, it's not great either. Cause it's, there's like all this tension and you're like, yeah, this is not great vibes. 
Um, but then when the music started playing, most of them stood up. So then people could sort of work their way in, but there were still, even when the music was playing people that had pit tickets that were outside of the pit because they could not fit in. And it was due to these people just sitting and having (laughs) their shit spread all over the place and the audacity space. Yeah. All about them and their experience and everyone else be damned. So never seen anything like that before. But like I said, they're just lucky that everyone else would rather be a little upset but not cause a problem because there's a lot of other crowds where that shit wouldn't fly and you'd be catching a foot to the back of the head. <laughs> like I said, imagine that at King Giz. Imagine that at Corn. Like, fuck, imagine that at Pigeons. Like, I'm freeze like you're anywhere. not getting away with it <laughs> anywhere you wouldn't get away with that now um <clears throat> all right well hell yeah that is a good setup uh for what you're about to dive into all right so yeah <laughs> i feel like i've given a shitload of background so now let's dive into the actual set and i won't spend a ton of time on each song because honestly the crazy thing about fish is so like they it's it's i guess as far as like format it's kind of like goose or pigeons playing ping pong or i'm freeze mcgee where they play so like the first song that they played theme from the bottom is a studio recorded song it's on the album billy breeze 1996 i believe um but so they play like what you hear on the studio recording and you know it's like maybe a four minute song and so they it's just sort of like they get that out of the way and then they just jam out for like five minutes and it's it's that's what they do for like every single song so it almost didn't even matter what song they picked like and i guess if you want to put a technical term on it it's called type two jamming where they like a song is played and then at a certain point they completely abandon it and go to improvisation um and i mean that's kind of what makes you a jam band is live improvisation um yeah so it it was very cool because you know fish has a huge live discography um and i'm really mostly familiar with the studio discography so I was like, you know, I wonder how many songs are going to play that I don't really know. So they started out with Theme from the Bottom. Then they went into Boogie on Reggae Woman, which is a Stevie Wonder song. So I'm like, all right, we're two for two. And that one, they didn't really jam out as much, you know, because it was a cover. And then they played Everything's Right, which is 11 minutes studio. So you can imagine like how easy it was to see that get turned into a 20 minute song. Um, so then they went into a song called Esther, which is off their very first album, Junta, and uh, is just one of the wackiest songs like you'll hear. Um, according to my buddy Bryant, who I was with, they don't whip that one out live a ton. And it's one of my, you know, one of my like more favorite fish songs. So It was nice to hear that. Um, Then they went into a song called Buried Alive. Um, So we're still like, I know everything that's being played. And then we get into our first live only song called Alaska. And then I was like, all right. This song is like what convinced me to be like, all right, I need to stop like only listening to the studio because it was just crazy the the way they ripped this i'm like i've never heard this song before and they just absolutely killed it same with this next song another live only song called mole i remember like that entire like next day before the show i was just like humming this song out loud probably driving like brian and scott just absolutely crazy like (laughs) just like could not get it out of my head um then after that they played two of my favorite songs to close out the first set birds of a feather and cavern 
and so yeah that was the first set you know like we're one set in and uh i'm just like mind blown because i i knew most of what they played they absolutely crushed it uh trey anastasio is a fucking guitar god like the i don't know just the rhythm the shredding like the way he like uses it to like direct what others are doing is just unreal like he is a complete showman absolute rock star like couldn't have been more impressed so then we got down to the second set and then they played another song um that i knew no men in no man's land then another one of my favorites down with disease joy and then they played a song called Ruby Waves, which is actually a Trey Anastasio solo song. So that was pretty cool. Then they went into a sort of live only song. Um, it's actually referred to as a Game Henge song. So it's called The Lizards. And so what Game Henge is, for those who don't know, um, it is the name of Trey Anastasio's senior project at college. So like Trey was a music major and in college he had to put together the senior project, which is music. And it, it's like sort of like the story and it's called game henge. And there's like all these different characters. So this is like mid eighties. And this was a song off of it called the lizards and it's like i don't know it's pretty crazy um some of fish's like first live recordings before any other studio stuff have the song on it so that was pretty crazy and so from then then from there they went into fluffhead and so this is another thing that was mind blowing for me so fluffhead as far as like what they played it live is actually two songs fluffhead and fluff's travels um but everyone there just calls it fluffhead and i like i just i, I didn't know because yeah like just go look at it now on the st studio album junta fluffhead is like three minutes fluff travels is like eight to ten and like when they played it live it was like 15 but there are distinct parts of Fluff's travels. They totally played it live. And I recognized it right away. And like my buddy Bryant like kept calling it Fluffhead. And I was like, well, they played Fluff Travels too. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it's not just Fluffhead. And he's like, no, dude, like Fluffhead. And like he wasn't the only one. Like it was just referred to as Fluffhead. And I like couldn't get over it. I was like, well, no, it's fluff travels too, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess, yeah, when they play it live, it's just they they always play both songs and it's called Fluffhead. And then they played another just absolute ripper, Chalk Dust Torture. Bryant was fiending for it the whole time. So he he got that one that he really wanted. And that's normally like a three minute song. And they probably did it like 10 to 15 minutes. Amazing encore with contact and first two, just two of my favorite fish songs again. And first tube is a instrumental song. It's the first song off the album farmhouse. And they ripped that one for again, just like over 10 minutes. <laughs> so that was day one. Day two, like I said before the show, just a uh, humming mole the entire time. Um, so yeah, day two had a little bit different of a seat. Um, so I was by myself in the pavilion. Brian and Scott had two seats over in a different section of the pavilion, but where I was, and you'll see because we're going to post pictures of this on our Insta, I was right next to the light and the sound guy like i could literally see everything they were doing like directly to the left of them so i'm in the upper pavilion but i'm in like the first row of the upper pavilion 
Um, and it was crazy before the show, I met these dudes who grew up in Southeast Michigan, you know, not too far from Toledo. The one had moved down to Cincinnati. The other one had moved down to Florida, their brothers. And so I guess they do this every weekend. The one will fly into Cincinnati and then they'll drive two hours up to Noblesville, uh, total veterans of the scene, like the older one, it was like his 50 something show. So it was cool because then whenever there was a live only song that I didn't know, he had the background for me and all the information about it right away. Um, so yeah, they started this one off with a song called turtle in the clouds live song that I didn't know. So I got the background on it right away from my Michigan boys. <laughs> um, and so then they went into a more of like a deeper track undermined and that is a studio song. I mean, there's a whole album called undermine, but that's pro if you count the sicket disc, then the sicket disc would be their least popular studio album. But if you don't, then undermine is probably their least popular studio album. So I was surprised to see them pull something out of it. And it was very cool um so yeah I, did, I didn't expect to get anything off that album then they go into drift while you're sleeping a trey solo song and then they played a song called strawberry letter 23 which is a cover by an artist named shuggy otis who i had never heard of and yeah i looked it up he's like a you know like 70s like soul funk artist so that was pretty cool um then we got another studio song, Stealing from the Faulty Plan. Um, uh, then into a live only song, Runaway Jim. Absolutely crazy. Might have been my favorite, eh, second favorite song that they played this day. Um, then they did another live only song, Camel Walk. Uh, another song called Timber, which is a cover from an artist named Josh White. Same thing, you hadn't heard it. Um, and then they played two songs in a row that are two of my personal favorites, Julius and Split Open and Melt. And it was very interesting hearing them live because on the studio version, Julius has like a full chorus and horn section. And same with Split Open and Melt. There's like this full chorus, there's this horn section. And obviously they didn't have that live. So it was interesting to see how they kind of filled in those layers live. But that closed out the first set. And then they started off the second set with not only my favorite fish song, but like probably just like one of like my favorite songs, like any artist. Like I remember, I'll never forget this Spruce. So I, you have heard this song. I played this song for you before, and it was right after we listened to like four or five Santana songs, and you thought it was still Santana. That's right. That's right, <laughs> dude. That that I that remember you're just laying on my couch, going like Santana, give it to me, and I'm like, this is fish. That was earlier this year. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's just like an absolute masterpiece of a song like it's so good like i would almost call it like a composition not even like a song but when they play the song live trey and the bass player mike gordon are jumping up and down on trampolines it's just unlike anything else um and then so from there they went into a trey solo song called a wave of hope and that was pretty crazy. And then they went after that back to back into songs off farmhouse bug and got a Jabu two uh, really good, two really good songs. And then another song called the howling, which is a live only. And then they killed the end of the second set with a good times, bad times cover. You know what it means to be alone. Oh, yeah. The crowd just went absolutely crazy during that. And then the encore was a song called Maze. And 
this is like typically a very like fast intricate song it's about seven minutes and they played it completely different and we'll get to this on a dave album review but dmb they did the same thing their show at pine knob with the song proudest monkey they just like cut the time in half and just played it totally different than they normally play it i mean i'm looking at fish's website right now and it said the first performance of the slow arrangement like that could be the first time it was ever done oh yeah so yeah like brian scott the two people i was with this was like i want to say they're like eighth ninth and tenth shows So they had seen fish before and they were geeking out about it. They were like, they've never done that. And same with the dude who I was like next to like instantly right away. He just knew he was like, they have never played that song that way. We just got like the most unique thing ever. And I was just like, cause I love the studio version of maze. I was like, this was awesome but I really wanted to hear regular (laughs) bass, but I I will get it. I will get it at some point. That's why you go to 50 shows. Yes. And where that quote came from, you all will hear in a later episode. Dave. But all good things must come to an end. So never miss a Sunday show. That was a phrase that I learned from just the entire culture there. There are people just wearing shirts that said, never miss a Sunday show. So we'll get into the Sunday set. The boys learned from the night before. They close the second set with good times, bad times, and they come out ripping on the Sunday show with While My Guitar Gently Weeps. And the crowd just erupts right away. That's awesome. And then they did a Clifton Shanier cover called My Soul. Then they did back-to-back songs off the album Rift, rift and horn to just again two of my favorites i i felt like i was so lucky honestly with the sets they played the whole weekend i got so many of my favorite songs nice um then we i got another live song wombat evolve which is a trey solo song and then just another one of my absolute favorites, Gaiuti. Yeah, that one's um, one, rowdy. I remember listening to that one. Gaiuti was the ugly fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. And then Limb by Limb, Mercury, The Moma Dance, just all songs that I knew. Um, just crazy way to end the first set. And then this. The, the second set, how they started off was just, absolutely mind-blowing so they started off again with just another one of my favorites sand then they play the song sigma oasis and they haven't taken a break at all during this but they just like roll into sigma oasis and which is a completely different song like completely different albums like farmhouse came out in 2000 sigma oasis their most recent album i want to say is either 2020 or 2021 when that album came out um but then they never really finished sand and so then at the end of sigma oasis they finished sand <laughs> and i was wild um then they do another live only song 20 years later then another one of my favorites the mango song then a not a trey solo song but a trey anastasio band song called rise and come together And then close the second set with just another favorite, Free. And then their encore were, it was a song called Grind, which is a live song. And then another song called Slave to the Traffic Light, which is sort of a studio song, sort of a live song. So back before their first album, when they had the resources to like, really make like a full proper studio album they recorded what was called the white tape and it was only released on cassette initially so just to give you an idea like it wasn't even released on cd it was released on cassette so the recording quality on this is like kind of rough like now you can get it on vinyl and get on cd whatever but that was all done after the fact and remastered and all that um 
but yeah so it was very cool like hearing them play that live because like i'm familiar with the song and i've heard it a million times but like i said the recording quality is a little rough so it was really cool to see him rip it live and that closed it out and that closed out the weekend but it didn't close out your 2022 fish experience there's four oh, quarters no. to this bitch and you're going to be seeing them again what in like two weeks here at blossom two three yeah. weeks oh yeah so yeah so that's another thing too so and my buddy bryant he was telling me about this they normally just have one long tour for like the whole summer and then you know if they're feeling up to it they might do some winter dates um but they segmented it into a spring tour and a summer tour so that show that i saw was the end of their spring tour and the last show was june 5th and they actually kick off their summer tour tonight july 14th so it's been basically a month and a week and they haven't played a show so they might have emptied the tank for us a little bit at noblesville but yeah august 2nd i will be seeing them blossom music center spruce if you're not doing anything uh-huh. you should get you get your ass down there well wow. but your boy will be in the pavilion centered maybe like 10 rows back i got lucky at the lottery Goddamn. fish does a lottery system like dave and i just right. got lucky as fuck <laughs> well hell yeah shout out the fish shout out to that review clip i'm glad you were able to experience that nothing like a there's literally nothing like a three-day show so glad you can say you've done that now absolutely i will never miss a sunday show i haven't and i won't (laughs) never miss a sunday show but we'll miss you because my name is bruce i'm clip and this has been another episode of final stout